Welcome to Camp Constitution Radio with your host, Hal Shirtliff. The show is heard on WBCQ, The Planet, every Tuesday and Thursday evening at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And you can also pick it up on our YouTube channel and on our Podomatic page. And it's brought to you by Camp Constitution, which, among other things, runs a week-long family camp. And this year's camp is two months away. July 28th to August 3rd in beautiful Pittsfield, Massachusetts at the Lakeside Christian Camp and Retreat Center. And we have, as a guest, one of our instructors, not this year, unfortunately, but uh, a couple of years ago, and that would be Alex Newman. How are you doing, Alex? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me, Hal. It's great to be with you. Well, thanks for taking time out. I know you uh, have a, an incredibly busy schedule. I don't know how you do it. You're driving on, in a trailer with your family, and you're giving, I don't know how many uh, speaking engagements around the country from, from what May. You started in the middle of May, and uh, you're going to end up in, uh, at the end of August, right? Yeah, we're going to go all the way through September, <clears throat> and then uh, we'll wrap up in Florida with a couple of events down there uh, into September. Wow. So, mm-hmm. And uh, now a little background. Alex has been a guest a number of times on the show. He is a writer for World Net Daily, and are you the are you a senior editor of the New American Magazine? Uh, no, they call me a foreign correspondent and a contributing editor. So. Oh, okay, contribute. Okay, that sounds a foreign correspondent sounds a little more. I like that. It sounds really uh, pretty good because you do you have traveled around the world and speak numerous languages. I have trouble with one and. I stumble with a little bit of German and a little bit of uh, French. But anyway, um, you're the co-author of Crimes of the Educators, uh, written by you and our late and dear friend Sam Blumenfeld. In fact, it'd be almost four years ago today. Uh, he died June 1st. So I believe it was this day that you met him for the first time, about four years ago. That's right. Uh, four years yeah, ago. it's amazing. That's right. Mm-hmm. And your, now your tour is entitled Rescuing the Ch- Children. Which is also the uh, the name of the special issue of the New American. So tell us a little bit about uh, the tour you're on, and then uh, let's talk about rescuing the children from these government schools. Yeah, well, thank you so much for the opportunity, Hal. And um, basically, um, you know, working with Sam, I, Sam Blumenfeld, uh, I came to the conclusion, as as many others have, that education is going to be actually the crucial fight. It's the one that transcends right through all the others, right? Uh, if we're going to stop the murder of babies, if we're going to keep the government limited, if we're going to preserve our constitutional republic, uh, if we are going to lower taxes, if we are going to preserve our gun rights and our rights to free speech, all of these political battles and economic battles that are going on really revolve around education. And so um, you know, we decided that I, I would spend uh, a lot of time on this issue. And so now we did the special report rescuing our children, where we kind of expose what's happening in the public schools and then urge parents to take uh, immediate and urgent action to get their kids out and to protect their kids. And that's really the the focus of my speaking tour. Um, I've I've given speeches already. I think I've done about 10 in uh, Florida, Georgia, South Carolina. I did Virginia last night. I've got several more here in Virginia. And then uh, heading north through, uh, you know, Connecticut and New Hampshire, Massachusetts, uh, you and Camp Constitution are hosting one. And then uh, I think overall I've got more than 50 now in more than 30 states. Uh, so that's, a, that's you know, amazing. Really yeah, it, it is quite quite incredible. We've had to turn down uh, many, many dozens of requests just because they don't fit into the schedule. We just can't find any more time. But what we're hoping is that we'll educate um, millions of parents after we're done with all this. You know, I'm asking everybody in the audience to please uh, order as many copies of the special report as they think they can distribute and help us get that out. And we hope that we'll rescue millions of children and that this will help give us a real chance at uh, rescuing our country and our freedoms. Uh, by the way, if somebody wants to get, to, uh, when I post this video and this, uh, when this is posted on our Podomatic, I'm going to put a link to the, your speaking engagements. But if somebody wants to go online, where's the best place where they can find out the details of your speaking engagements? Uh, we've got most of them posted at uh, Liberty Sentinel, S-E-N-T-I-N-E-L dot O-R-G, uh, and then it's slash tour. So LibertySentinel.org slash tour, and you'll find um, an a updated list with uh, probably about 40-something of those across something like 25 states. Uh, there's still several or more than several that are missing from there, everything in Florida, Utah, Montana, New Mexico. None of those are up there yet. 
but mm-hmm. uh, they will be going up uh, as soon as we have all the details nailed down and so people can find out there. And then if people want to get a copy of the special report itself, um, we, you can go to uh, thenewamerican.com slash rescuing our children. And uh, if people want to order just one copy, you know, see what this is about, and see if they want to uh, see if they agree that this is as important as I say it is, uh, we'll pay the shipping and handling if they use the promo code EDUCATE19 or they can get it on PDF. And what we hope is that people will read that, see how important this is, and then go back and order 100 or 1,000. Well, that's great. I, I know that uh, we're going to be at the Red Pill Expo with the table that I'll be working with you gentlemen of the Freedom Project Education, and we'll have copies available there. Uh, now, um, you mentioned uh, your friendship with Sam Blumenfeld, and I know I first met Sam, I think it was 1988 or 89, and he told me way back then that it, it is a sin to put your children in public schools. Uh, the term government schools would be more appropriate. That's the term I think that he started using after that. Why do you agree with that? And if so, why? By the way, I do agree I with do that. Agree with that. <laughs> I, I do agree with that 100%. In fact, I think it's a very grievous sin. Um, you know, God has, I, you know, I've I read a really, really good book. One of the people who helped us with this special report is Israel Wayne. Uh, he wrote oh, a book yes, about pretty him. recently. Yeah. He's a great guy. He came out last year. It's called, uh, Does God Have an Opinion on Education? And it turns out God does have an opinion on education. In fact, he's got a lot of opinions on education. And if you open up your Bible, you can read them. Uh, and what you'll notice, there's a very common theme repeated over and over and over again in Scripture from you know the earliest verses in the Old Testament all the way Solomon, through King to Solomon. the New Testament. Yeah. Right. Um, about you know the raising and the upbringing and the education of children. And you will never in all the pages of the Bible, find any reference to you know, Caesar raising the kids or Caesar educating the kids. You just don't see it. Parents are given the primary responsibility and uh, the duty to educate their children. God says, you know, impress these laws on your children. Uh, you know, uh, talk to them while you're walking by the way. He gives us a lot of information on what an education should look like. And never anywhere does he even hint, does ever in, in any way, that the government should be in charge of education. Um, and when you look at what the schools are doing today, um, you know, they're, they're brainwashing the kids, they're teaching them they can be infinite genders, they're promoting uh, homosexuality, they're promoting socialism, they're promoting false religion, things like humanism. Uh, you know, now they've got a lot of schools all over the country, even in conservative states where they're making the kids recite the Islamic Shahada, you know, the conversion prayer. When you take all this together, when you look at the ideologies they're teaching the kids, sustainable development, for example, which is basically you know, take everything God has instituted and ordained and flip it upside down, you understand what sustainable development is. Um, mm. it, you know, no parent, I think, can justify that. It, it's, it's like sending your child into spiritual warfare completely unarmed, knowing that he's going to be destroyed. It, you, it's just, you can't do it. You just can't justify it. I agree with Sam. Um, you know, Christian parents, especially, and Jewish parents, uh, have a responsibility um, not just the right, but the duty to protect their kids from this. You know, what's interesting, uh, oh, I think of King Solomon, that the foundation, the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of education. And if that is not part of the, if, not, if that's not the foundation of your schooling curriculum, then what you're doing. Now, a number of years ago, we had a, had a dear friend that was a member of our church. He was a music director from Southern Africa. Wonderful guy. And he said, and a lot of Christians still feel this way, that Christian children should be in our public schools so they can witness to the non-believers and so forth and so on. And I, uh, I said to him, what would you think of me that on the way to church Sunday morning that I dropped my children off at the Unitarian Sunday School? And he said, uh, well, I, uh, I said, what, would you question my faith? He said, well, of course I would. Now, why would you do that? And he said, because the Unitarians, they don't believe what we believe. We're Trinitarians. We believe in the miracles of Jesus. We believe in salvation, et cetera, et cetera. Unitarians don't believe any of that. I said, then why would you send your children to Unitarian prep schools five days a week? I think it resonated. And, you know, the, the, uh, the average parent, I, I have five children. Four of them have grown. One of them is still, uh, we're still homeschooling. Um, most parents want what's best for their children. They don't go to any doctor. They'll check out this pediatrician, does this person, this man or woman doctor, do they have good credentials? How are other people rating them? What about food? Well, we don't want you to eat this junky, this junky food or these sweets. We don't want you nutritionist things, nutritional things. We want you to exercise. We want you to be in good health. But when it comes to education, they seem to, it's like the junk food. 
it's even worse than junk food because it's it, junk food can you know it might not be so bad once a week or once a month but five day a steady diet of junk food would kill you so we've got our children edu- dangerous educational junk food yeah and in fact i, I use a an even more radical uh, analogy. You know, I, I, I say to parents in these talks, hey, you wouldn't send your children into a burning building, right? Why, why wouldn't you send oh, your children that's into right. a burning building? Well, be, because they, you know, they would suffer physical harm <laughs> from that. Uh, well, you know, you're sending them into a building where it's almost guaranteed that they're going to suffer intense mental harm, spiritual harm. They're going to be taught things that are absurd. They're going to be stewing in this. You know, the, the humanists have been bragging for years about how they're using the schools to bring your children into their religion. Um, you know, why in the world would you be willing to send them into these kinds of institutions? And to the parents who say, well, you know, I want my kids to be salt and light in the public school system. You know, God has made clear that we're dealing with with spiritual warfare here, and he's made very clear that parents need to bring up their children in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. As you pointed out, how God tells us twice in Proverbs, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It's the beginning of knowledge. They're not getting, not only are they not getting the fear of the Lord in these schools, the Lord isn't even allowed to be mentioned in these schools. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you're sending your children into spiritual battle completely unprepared, with no weapons, with no armor, and uh, it, it's almost a certainty that they're going to get clobbered. You're nuts if you do that. And, you know, I hate to sound harsh, and I, and I don't want to necessarily make parents feel guilty, but they need to feel guilty. Uh, you know, there, there should be no higher priority for you than the well-being of your children, their physical, their spiritual, their mental well-being, and um, it's not debatable anymore. You can look at the government's own data and see they're not going to get a, a real education. If you're a Christian, you know they're not going to have the fear of the Lord. In fact, they'll only learn that the Lord isn't even real, that their pseudoscience proves that uh, you know, he came from slime that turned into monkeys over mm-hmm. billions of years without <laughs> any creator. Um, you know, and even if you're not a Christian, even if you're just concerned about your basic freedoms, you know, uh, you're, the kids aren't even allowed to know today that uh, they were created equal, and that they were all endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, because that would be religious, is what we're told. Uh, never mind the fact that the founder said that was a self-evident truth. So, no, you know, overall, I, I think it's just it, it's irresponsible, and, and parents need to do something about this, because they're destroying not just our kids, but our families, our marriages, our churches, our communities, our country, our constitutional republic. And, um, you know, this is the defining struggle of our time, I think. I want to go into the foundation. Where, where, where did this become, begin? You know, Horace Mann, John Dewey. But before that, can you address this Muslim or Islamic issue in our public schools? Now, the schools are supposed to be secular. We, we worship man. But we see this popping up all over the country. Newton, Massachusetts is a relatively wealthy suburb of Boston and has a very large Jewish population. Their government schools are pushing the Muslim, Muslim uh, issues. And, uh, you know, I, I, I tell people that, uh, which I learned from your colleague and our friend, Dr. Duke Pesta, that the uh, Common Core was funded in part by some Muslim interest, and that's why you get the Muslim stuff in the curriculum. Can you talk about that? Yeah, and, and I think it's, it's be, it goes beyond just Islam, you know, and this has been happening all over the country. Uh, Tennessee, West Virginia, even the real conservative states, they're taking the children to mosques. It's, you know, it's happening all over Western Europe. They're making the girls put these headscarves on. They're making them recite the, uh, the Islamic Shahada, where the kids are told to, you know, repeat after me, uh, you know, there is only one God, his name is Allah, and uh, Muhammad is his prophet and all that. You know, if you want to believe that, that's fine. But to force little kids in a school to recite that, which, you know, has very serious implications, is very problematic. But it goes so far beyond just this. You know, what you notice how, if you look at what's going on in the public schools, is that all the false religions are um, not just tolerated, but encouraged. So they'll they'll have the kids doing yoga and, you know, Mm -hmm meditation, uh, they'll, they'll teach the kids basically any false religion is totally fine, but when it comes to the God of the Old Testament, the God of the New Testament, of course the same God, uh, that is what's not allowed, that is what needs to be ridiculed, that is what the federal courts will come down on like a ton of bricks. You can teach the kids any other absurdity that you want, um, and that's fine, but as soon as you mention Jesus Christ, then that's when you get in big trouble. And, and you know, we need to be clear. They, the schools have become very serious religious institutions. John Dewey was a, described himself as a religious humanist, and his religion, as you mentioned, uh, is, is the idea that man is God. And, you know, this false religion has been around from the beginning of creation, right? The, the, the Satan, the serpent said... Uh, the fall hey, you know, of man anyway, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, God, God knows that if you disobey him here, ye shall be as gods, right? Um, so... This false religion has been with us 
from yeah you know, from from at least the time of the fall, and um, it's not going anywhere. And unfortunately, as uh, Justice Potter Stewart recognized um, when uh, when he dissented from the Supreme Court decisions in '62 and '63, where they uh, abolished Bible and abolished prayer, he said, uh, you know, these decisions led not to true neutrality with respect to religion, but to the mm. establishment of a religion of secularism. So the Supreme Court, under the guise of enforcing the First Amendment, which says Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion, the Supreme Court actually did precisely what Congress was prohibited from doing, which was establish a religion. And the Supreme Court did that. Of course, you know, the, the First Amendment is not really applicable in these cases. You know, the state of New York is not Congress. Uh, my local school district is not Congress. And so if my local school district or if my state legislature uh, mandates that there should be a prayer at the beginning of the class or that there should uh, be a Bible reading at the assembly, uh, you know, the First Amendment is inapplicable there. Uh, in fact, they'll say, well, separation of church and state, you can't have that. Well, mm -hmm. actually, at the time of the founding, when that was written, multiple states had established churches. So, you know, very self-evidently, they weren't talking Including about Including Massachusetts. That. That's right. That's right. And, and, and you know, it's, it's all fraud, yeah. and they only got away with this by brainwashing the kids. And the primary author of the First Amendment was a congressman from right next door, dead of Massachusetts, Fisher Ames. And Fisher Ames, in one of his writings, made reference to the Bible as being the key book for any school. Well, wait a minute now, Fisher. Don't you know it's a separation? You, you wrote the First Amendment. Don't you know what you meant by it? <laughs> But right, that's right, and, and that's so how they're teaching the kids every false religion you can imagine. Uh, the only religion that can't be discussed in school is true religion, biblical religion. Christianity. And, you know, it's interesting that you, uh, it's almost, you can't get away from that. There's a school in Waltham, Massachusetts, which was in Blumenthal. In fact, I used to drive by it, you know, on the way to visit him. And it was a, it was a public school. It's now, uh, you know, office building. But it had a, it had a, Bible verse, I, I had got out and do a, did a little video on it. I said, here, I think it was from Psalms, I can't recall exactly. Right in the school, public school building, here is a Bible verse. I mean, what, what, isn't that unconstitutional? Isn't that some kind of horrible affront to uh, the First Amendment? And so we could see this history all around us. Um, I rem now, I'm 60. I remember the silent, which I really hate, you know, a, a moment of silence. It's just supposed to take the place. And I think they did away with the moment of silence as well. But I remember singing uh, hymns. We, call, we called it Christmas. We didn't call it uh, winter solstice or winter fest. We called it Christmas. And we would sing uh, a, Christmas, like, you know, a Christmas carol here and there. And we had little Christmas carol uh, books, you know, with the, all the lyrics of the Christmas carols, you know. Uh, that wasn't a violation. And it's interesting, too. It took uh, the First Amendment was ratified, what, 1792? Is that correct? Somewhere around there? Yep. And you had about, I don't know, there was a number of states that were had state religions, Massachusetts and Connecticut, the Congregational Church. Uh, and it took how many years? A hundred, you know, almost 180 years to say, oh, we didn't realize that you can't do this in public schools. So <laughs> we know that th this is a war against Christianity. There's no question about it. And wasn't it John That's Dewey? Right who said that we must use, the humanist must use the classroom as a preacher uses the pulpit to promote humanism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, and the humanists and, have been declaring that this is what they're doing all along now. Uh, John Dewey talked about that. Uh, you know, um, C.F. Potter talked about that. It, you know, it, uh, they, they even wrote about it uh, more recently, I think in the 1980s in uh, Humanist magazine, uh, that, that the classroom is really the front line of the battle between what they describe as the rotting corpse of Christianity and the, the Christianity. new face of humanism. Now, also, too, that uh, in your book, Crimes of the Educators, you and Sam didn't mince your words. You used the term crime, and you listed treason as one of them. And uh, Sam actually coined a, term, a word, menticide, the murder of brains. And he said what was happening wasn't just some bad theories that were being used, but it was deliberate attempt to dumb the American children down morally, intellectually. And John Dewey wrote about it in 1898. It's, so it's not like, uh, you know, they, they have their secret meetings, uh, but, uh, you know, they probably say things. In fact, who was it? Arrustus Brownson talked about this, right? Um, yep. But they, the great they, object was it, to get rid of Christianity. And that was back in the 1850s, he said that, right? 
Yep, and he was one of the conspirators yeah. involved in this. He, you know, he converted to Christianity and repented and kind of blew the whistle on all this. But and he um, used you know, the word conspiracy, didn't he? Yep. Mm-hmm. yep, and that's what this was. I mean, this was a, this was a concerted effort to establish a system of government schools where parents would be, as he put it, compelled by law to send their children where all religion would be excluded except that which could be verified by the census. And and the great object, he said, was to get rid of Christianity. And they've been wildly successful. I mean, to the point where uh, even a lot of the Americans who still call themselves Christians are what I call Christian in name only. You know, they don't... Well, by default. They've never even heard the gospel, right? They they may call themselves a Christian because their parents called themselves that, but they don't know anything about what that even means. Now, uh, now we we discussed the problem for the last uh, twenty three or four minutes. Uh, what is the solution? And the pain, you know, one of the things I hear about from, and in fact, I just spoke to someone just a few days ago. Well, not everybody can homeschool. Not everybody, you know, single parents, both mother and father working. Can you can you address that? Yeah, well, you know, I would say the the beginning of the solution is to pull your children out. And, uh, you know, I think homeschooling is one very, very good option. I think it's probably the best option in most cases, even when parents think they can't do it. Um, you know, we know single moms who homeschool. We have some of them in our co-op, you know, the husband mm-hmm. left or whatever. And um, they, they'll work two jobs and they'll study for college at night. So they can become a nurse. And somehow they find a way to do it. And, yeah, they rely on friends from the homeschool co-op and they might rely on grandparents to, you know, help take the kids one or two days a week, things like that. So it's hard. It, you know, it's a sacrifice. But if they can do it, pretty much anybody can do it. I've only met one person um, who can't do it just because there's a court order after a, a nasty divorce, wow. which is, you know, a, a shame. But most people, I think, can homeschool. Where there's a will, there's a way. And what could be more important to you than the well-being of your children? Well, you know, we need two incomes so we can afford that new BMW, so we can take a two-week trip <laughs> right. to Disney, so we can, you know. If that's where your priorities are, I, you know, I think you answered your own question, right? You need to re-examine your priorities and figure out, you know, what can we do? As for me, I'd rather live in a cardboard box and homeschool my kids than <laughs> live in a mansion and then send them to be destroyed. It's just, you know, no or, question. Or a trailer. Or a trailer, huh? Exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. No kidding. You're doing that as it is, right? That's uh, but, right, you know, exactly. But. 20 or 30 years ago, it was more challenging. But today, thanks to technology, uh, there's online fully accredited courses. There's CDs and DVD sets. Uh, and you don't need uh, th- this compulsory education where you have to spend six to seven hours, five days a week, nine or ten months out of the year. That's about institutionalization. You don't need six hours a day, you know, to get some really good formal education. And uh, one of the solutions is the Freedom Project, uh, which you're involved in, Freedom Project Education. Is it fpe.edu is the website? Uh, it's fpeusa.org. So that's F as in uh, freedom, P as in project, E as in education, USA.org. And, yeah, that's a wonderful resource. I teach uh, advanced economics there to high school seniors. Uh, and Dr. Duke Pesta is the one who leads it. And it's a really, really good option. It's an online K through 12 school based on the classical model of education. Uh, kids will learn, you know, from a Christian perspective, Christian worldview. They'll learn to read using phonics. They'll learn it's Christian, history, but it's, it's Christian, but non-denominational. It's not Catholic, Precisely. Protestant, right? Or, right. You know, so Seventh-day we have Adventist, Catholics, we yeah. have Protestants, we have Jews. You know, we have. Um, you know, the, the point is just uh, we take the Bible as our source of morality and as our source of truth. And, uh, and apply that to education as it should be done. But yeah, you're right. You know, a Catholic could send their kids to the school just as easily as a as a uh, Lutheran or a Presbyterian. You know, it's, um, try to be uh, inclusive in that sense. But yeah, it's, it's a really good alternative. You know, for churches, you empty six days a week. We can actually put a school right in your church. All we need is some kids, uh, an adult mm. chaperone, and some computers. So you know, if you, if you belong to a church that doesn't have a Christian school, that's one option. And uh, yeah, we're hoping that this will, this school will play a big role in uh, the revival of uh, freedom and and uh, family and faith in the United States. So we think that uh, the kids graduating from this school will be future leaders in our country, and uh, they're getting a great education. They're learning truth. They're learning how to seek truth. They're learning Latin and uh, you know the history of the world and all kinds of amazing logic things. Logic too. They're not going to get from a public system. So that's right, logic and philosophy and you know all these uh, lost subjects and it's now that in government school they learn about climate change and gender theory um so yeah no, i think there's a lot of reasons to be optimistic there's a lot of good options like freedom project out there for parents who want some help with their homeschooling and um you know it's a really good time to be uh doing 
pursuing your own uh, educational alternatives. There's more resources out there today than there ever have been in history. So, what I, what I, I tell people is just go to the go to your uh, your computer, go to your uh, your search engine, and put in homeschool groups in whatever state you're in. Uh, and there's gonna they're gonna pop up all kinds of homeschool support groups. You know, there's good and bad in everything. Uh, obviously, some uh, some are more Christian oriented, some aren't. Uh, there's homeschool co- conventions, uh, practically at, uh, all over the country. Uh, we we set up tables at conventions on a regular basis. We're going to be doing the Chaps uh, Christian Homeschools of Pennsylvania next month. Uh, actually, in a few weeks, and the Massachusetts has one. Maine has one. Uh, the Connecticut collaborates with the Massachusetts group. I know there's a big one in Virginia, a big one in Florida. We just had a table in Michigan at the uh, conference in Lansing, California. So they're all over the country. Uh, and it really isn't much of an excuse, unless you're just selfish and don't care about your children. Once you know this information uh, and you do not do anything about it. And there are also, there are some, also some good uh, private schools, Christian-based schools. And I like the idea, what you said, that you don't have to, spend a million dollars building a huge uh, a building to house a school these churches all over the country and you know i drive i drive around the region and in between visits i might pop by a church we'll leave off information about the samuel blumenfeld archive our week-long summer camp and camp constitution general and for the most part these churches are empty they're locked uh, they're only open wednesday nights and sunday mornings and they should be open all the time they should be the true community centers, not the government buildings uh, as community centers. So I, I put this upon the members of churches around the country. Uh, get get involved, and you can contact the FP Freedom Project Education, and it's uh, very inexpensive, and it's a great way. Uh, you know, if you want to witness to the to to the community, this is a great way to do it. A great outreach, I would think. Yeah, it, it really is. And- uh, you know, right now I'm actually standing in the Stonebridge School. I just finished delivering a lecture to their uh, high school seniors here and their 11th graders. There's so many great options today. Uh, just a few days ago, or actually a week and a half ago, I lectured at a, a Christian school in just outside of Atlanta in Georgia. And, you know, no matter where you are in America, there's a lot of options. You do not have to expose your child to this crazy indoctrination, to the deliberate dumbing down. Um, if there's a will, there's a way. And so parents, you know, the very first step here is to protect your children, and that means pulling them out. And don't worry, there's a lot of support and there's a lot of resources out there to help. Also, uh, I think our, our week-long family camp is a great supplement to uh, any homeschool curriculum, and the camp's coming up um, uh, uh, July 28th to August 3rd here in Western Massachusetts. And we try to accommodate people coming from outside of the region. We'll pick you, for, uh, you'll pick you guys up at airports, bus stations. There's a train station that's uh, right in the, not too far from the camp, an Amtrak station, and we may even have some carpool abilities. We also have a YouTube channel, and I know the Freedom Project does too, with a lot of the, our classes. So you could just go to our website, our, our YouTube channel, and punch in, you know, uh, U.S. Constitution uh, or playlist, and you would get. I don't know how many hours of great instruction from some top top instructors. And I know your class, you gave one or two classes a few years ago, and that's up on the YouTube channel as well. So anyway, uh, we get about a minute left. Uh, how can people, again, get a hold of uh, Mr. Alex Newman, uh, get to read some of your writings, or uh, attend one of your conferences or one of your presentations? Well, thank you so much, Hal. Uh, I'll be up in Massachusetts. I've got uh, two events there, one on Cape Cod and uh, one that uh, you and Camp Constitution are putting yeah, together in, in Reading. Reading. Yeah. Right? And uh, if people June want to find the full list, it's at Liberty Center. Yeah, June 11th. And that's also the same day as the Cape Cod one. That'll be a lunch event. Uh, so that'll, you can find all that and more at libertysentinel.org slash tour. And uh, I'm on social media if anybody wants to get in touch with me. And uh, I do hope to see you, all the listeners, at uh, one of these events, and I hope you'll bring your friends and your family and your pastor, and um, you know, together I think we can rescue our kids and our country. It's going to take work, but it's certainly worth doing. All right, Alex, God bless you and your family. Safe travels, and we will see you in a few weeks. Folks, thank you for listening. God bless you, too. Listening. All righty, you've been listening to Camp Constitution Radio on WBCQ The Planet.